This is Dr. Richie Gahate Garcia. I'll be on a podcast for the Valley Percussion Festival. Hi, this is Dr. Richie Gahate Garcia. Letting you know that this Saturday at 10 a.m., I'll be on a podcast for the Valley Percussion Festival with Gilbert Garcia. So if you're around online, please check out the interview. It should be a lot of fun. All right, take care. My name is Henry Brun. I'm here in the auditorium of a great school, the Valley View High School. And uh, I was asked a very, very sensitive question of what music means to me uh, and what it's done for me, you know, in my life. To be able to put it in words is that music changed my life and made me who I am today. I was an extrovert when I was in high school, but yet very shy in many other aspects. Now, the one thing that always brought me out of my cell was playing music. And <clears throat> that alone was something that I'd yet to know how to handle it at the time. And little did I know what it would do for me over the years. So <clears throat> I, I always had this passion for music and I wanted to continue pursuing it. And I did so. The first opportunity I had to play as long as I closed my eyes, I could play eternally because I had the, the concern of fear, people, reactions, and things like that. But <clears throat> the more I played, the more confident I became. And it turned me to be the person that I am now. You can't shut me up. <laughs> uh, I love talking, especially I love talking about music. Music has been my life. It's the pulse that wakes me up in the morning. It's the, it's the lull that puts me to bed at night. And, and you know, I couldn't live without my instrument, you know. Uh, I have instruments all over the house and it just becomes an extension of my body. And, and it, it speaks. Whatever I don't say in words is being said through whatever sounds I create, you know, out of music. Uh, it's the best career I could have ever had. If you take it serious and you apply yourself to it and you invest the time that you need to invest into it, the sky's the limit. You can do what you need to do through music. You can do the speaking. You can project any emotion, anything you want through your music. And believe it or not, when it's a creative aspect happening there, the music that's going to happen is going to be beautiful. Music is a way to speak to the rest. And when the music is universal, there's no words that can be translated out of music except emotions. Emotions are the ones that control how your body feels. Your body feels what your mind is creating. That creation is tied in with the expression of what you're trying to say through the instrument. Without getting complicated, your instrument is your real voice and you don't have to say a single word to express everything you have in yourself. If you apply yourself to play and you take it seriously enough, you'll be surprised of what the rewards will be. Music is a beautiful career. I would change it for anything in the world. The other aspect of it, uh, I've loved having the opportunity to share with all of you on the educational side. I've been blessed to learn a lot in music and I love taking what I know and passing it on because that's a gift from above. Uh, we need to share what we have because you'll be surprised if everybody has a little bit of happiness, this world will be 10 times better than what it is today.
Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gilbert Garcia. I'm the director of Valley Percussion Festival. It is an honor. It is a pleasure to be here with you guys once again today. And uh, uh, boy, I, I, I really hope, guys, that your week went great, that it was smooth, that it was productive, that you enjoyed whatever it is that you were doing, whatever your job is. Um, and that your weekend has started great. And hopefully this stream will help you get it started in that way, shape, or form. We are in, guys, for quite a treat today. Our artist, our guest artist, legendary, legendary, to say the least, legendary. He has toured with some of the most famous um, musicians, solo artists, uh, amazing. You will find him in a lot of footage with his latest, uh, uh, the group or the artist that he has been uh, involved with, Phil Collins. Phil Collins. And today you are going to know, you are going to find out why they call him El Pulpo. With us, without further ado, guys, Dr. Richie Gajate Garcia. Richie. Hey. My man, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's, uh, I'm here in Los Angeles right now. It's a beautiful day, so so far it's not too hot. So we can get that. We can have some fun today. But yes, thank you so much, Gilbert, for inviting me to participate in the Valley uh, Percussion Festival. You know, and we met some years ago. And, yes, uh, and here we are. Uh, you know, still in the music and doing this. So grateful for that. Yes, and, and and congratulations to you, sir. Your career, your career is is, is a perfect example of, of what 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 we should strive for, and and we should keep an eye on you because we're gonna learn a lot from you. Your career has been doing this constantly, constantly, constantly. You right before COVID, you were touring with Phil Collins, correct? Yes, uh -huh. we were all over the world. We were in, in Europe. We were playing. Pretty amazing thing. We were playing stadiums. We were playing uh, concerts like we were in, uh, in in London. We played for eighty eight thousand people outside, uh, wow. you know, and, and and all these places like that. And then, unfortunately, and not not only for me but for all musicians, then the COVID came in and all of that stopped. You know. Yes. But you know that doesn't mean that our creativity is going to stop. That doesn't mean that our passion for what we love to do is going to stop. We just we just keep going. That's all. You know, and for me, gratefully, and always, uh, I always thank the Lord for the gift that I, uh, thanks to the church, I was able to continue playing at church and at least keep my craft up as much as I could. And so for that, I'm very grateful. And uh, uh, and then, of course, teaching and being, uh, uh, teaching online, doing some teaching, you know, Zoom kind of stuff with uh, MI, Valley College of Music, where I also teach. And, uh, and also being able to at least, <laughs> excuse me, uh, do some recording for people at home. So everything nice. became, when they used the word a home studio, it was definitely a home studio. <laughs> <So> we, couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't go anywhere. Also, so that's the thing. <clears throat> so it's all been wonderful. And, you know, Phil Collins has been one of the things that I've done that I've been, of course, uh, very thrilled to do and play with such amazing musicians. And And, but the thing that, like you just said, the, they call me a pulpo and stuff like that, you know, part, partly uh, because of, of course, my, the way that I play, but also because of the versatility that I've been able to achieve throughout the years, which has been playing all, as many styles of music as possible. And besides percussion, I'm also a drummer, you know, and I'm a teacher, and I have books, and I have CDs, and I invented the gajate bracket to play cowboy with your foot, you know. Uh, you know this this thing and all of this yes. stuff and it's all, always trying to keep inventing myself you know i'm now a senior citizen but that's just a, an age you know i mean a number it has nothing to do as long as i have the health and ability, yes I'm, i'm playing until i pass out so <laughs> uh, we, we, we follow in the paths of buddy rich right amen amen you know i can tell you one thing I uh, just saw uh, 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 the music, uh, like I said, I'm a senior citizen, but the music has kept me young. Yes. I, 
I have to be up. Well, of course, because I like my son, uh, Roland, who, you know, uh, we did the Kanye West uh, Sunday services stuff and all of that, you know, and there that, you know, I got to be up with what that's happening. I can't just be like, you know, I'm not going to be, <laughs> I got to, I got to play whatever comes up. And I'm we got to step up to it. Yeah, now with all the EDM music, with all that stuff, the, the, and all that kind of stuff that's happening and everything, you know, I gotta, I have to embrace it and not, and not, and not put it down because I go like, oh yeah, but you know, that's a computer plane. Well, it, it is a computer plane, and guess what? It's 2021, so we got to keep going with whatever yes. is and adapting and just adding it. What I do is that I try to add things like that to what I do. If if yes. I'm required to, depending on what I'm doing. So exactly, so those are the, and that thing, and like I, uh, uh, you know, just as we were talking, you know, my career has been extensive. So I played and I played with French singers, I played with Iranian singers, I played with uh, Filipino singers, I played with uh, uh, Korean, with a Chinese, I played with, uh, you know, uh, of course, American, many Americans, and I played with Latinos, you know, I played with. Celia Cruz, Pico Puente, you know, I mean, just a bunch of different people uh, uh, that, uh, uh, and, and that's what's given me my experience and my whole, my whole joy, because the, yes. the thing that I love the most has been the variety of things that I've done. You know, it'd yes. be great to be part of a group like the Rolling Stones and then become a multimillionaire, but that's the only music I'm going to play. And that, that, that drives me nuts. You know, that if you look, if you hear any of my CDs that I did, which by the way are on uh, Amazon and my books that I bring, I'm always covering a bunch of different styles of music because yes. I, I get tired of just one thing, you know, even though I love it, but I get tired of only one style, you know, so. Yes, yeah, so. And, 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 and the thing is, wow, Richie, you just blew my mind away with what you just said. And I knew it, right, because I researched it and I, I, I read up, up, up on, on you, obviously, right? And uh, we've known each other for, for a while. But the thing is, you mentioned Tito Puente. You mentioned Celia Cruz. And, you know, all these other uh, 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 people from, from different nations. And, and the thing is, uh, when we're learning from you, like today, when we're learning from you, Tito Puente himself, he, uh, he played and, uh, and learned from so many different people. Uh, Celia Cruz and her musicians, the same thing, and all those other individuals. It's, 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 if you add up the number of people that have influenced Tito Puente and just Celia Cruz, just them two, all those people that influenced them when you were with them, they influenced you. So we have a huge, huge melting pot when we're learning from you. We're learning from Tito Puente, from Celia Cruz, from all those other people you mentioned, from Phil Collins, his musicians, and everybody that they've learned from. It's, 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 it's incredible. Yeah, we all, we, you know, we all, uh, all if, if, and this is my advice to whomever might be watching or listening, is that try to play, you know, as many different types of music as you as you can because it's all you learn from all of it you learn what to do or what not to do you know uh you know one thing when i get into a little bit of playing is for example you know cuba puerto rico <coughs> well in the world but <coughs> excuse me basically the caribbean has you know amazing conga players but one mistake that a lot of the latino conga players sometimes would make is that they, when they go to play, just say in a pop world or something, they want to play it like they're playing Latin salsa music, and it's you don't approach it that way. But your technique, yes, you use that, but it's your musical knowledge as to what does this kind of music require, or what yes. does it not want in your music, in the music. And, you know, it's like a, a very simple example. Is I remember. Uh, I, I can't remember who I was recording with, but I was just playing a straight pattern, you know, to that guy. Uh, uh, and they, they're like, can you, how can you get rid of that? That daka, daka. And I go, what? What are you talking about? Did this, right? That, they said, well, all we want to hear is do, do, but, 
do, do, da, do, do, da, and I go, but that's not the complete pattern of what a conga player does. It's no, but our song, that's all I want in the song. Oh. So, then, so you have to adapt. You go like, okay, you know what? This is not a Latin song. This is not a cha-cha, whatever the heck it is. Okay, so just try to modify it so that they don't hear much of that. So then I would go... They won't hear it. Yes. You know so that kind of stuff. And people, and I'll never forget, I was playing something and I think I was on a TV show and somebody said, Oh, God, that conga player doesn't know how to play a tumbao. Well, yes, I do. It's just that I was doing <laughs> And then some. Yes, yes, I do. But it's because I was doing what the guy that's paying my bill said, Play. Okay, I'll play it. Yes. You want it with one hand? Sure. I don't, you know. Like yeah, that. and that's the thing that that a lot of times uh, uh, players sometimes become a little bit, you know, you know, because you you know we as you know we practice we practice like crazy, you know, yes. and you go man, I'm playing, you know, you know this or that, and then when you go to play, they say no, can you not play that? You go what? <laughs> I've just spent like eight years of learning this thing, and they don't want me to play it now. They want me to play it half of it, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So these are all things that musicians uh, uh, through the years and, and you gain experience and, and then you start learning like, you know, this kind of music, no, I can't approach it this way or I, or maybe just play a simple pattern, but maybe, you know, add a shaker or whatever. So, you know what I mean? I, uh, so I don't want to take too much time talking, but uh, 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 if you have any questions for me, I can. What I want to do is cover just a few things, you know, yes. basic things. Any, any percussionist that wants to play, you know, like the congas and timbales and bongos and all this stuff, what I've always told my, the student, my, this, my students, is that you want to learn first the rhythms that are naturally applied to that particular instrument, okay? Once you've applied it, you know, once you've learned how to, just say, play the instrument and you learn how to play different rhythms in, that are in the style in which this instrument lives, then you can modify it to whatever other kind of music that you're playing. For example, Gilbert had asked me to, uh, and by the way, Gilbert, thank you so much for having me. I want, I want to make sure that I uh, don't forget to thank you very much for this. Um, so, for example, bongos. And by the way, this was the first signature bongos that LP made for me uh, and uh, some years ago and it, I don't I think it's only on special order now but anyway uh, it's a beautiful bongo and artwork done by another Garcia but then you have Hector Garcia all these Garcias so anyway so what's the first thing that I try to teach uh, someone that's going to learn bongos is first how do you hold the instrument you know it's not here you don't play it here you know, you have to sit on a chair. Hopefully, I'm sitting on a cajon now. But then the position is if you play right-handed, okay, then the bongo position is like this. And it's not between your knees like this because after a while, it will just fall. As you can see, it's already dropping. So the uh, if you one thing that you have to learn to do is that the tension rods, where they fall on your legs, is very crucial because when you're playing this all night, trust me, if they're not placed right, your legs will be in a lot of pain. So, so you take the, the, the tension rod that's here, right, on, on, on the, uh, the macho and embra that they call, and uh, the male, female, then, you know, you, you hold it this way, and what you want to feel your leg is holding the body while this is falling within the crack of your leg. So you have this one here, the top one is here, and the, and the bottom one is here. So I have that here, and now I'm very comfortable. My legs are, are, are you know, just kind of cr cross, uh, and uh, this is my sitting position, and I can sit here all night, and I'm fine. Uh, so now, talking about the instrument, what the main rhythm that is played on a bongo is they call it martillo. Now, martillo means hammer. It's a hammer sound. They call it martillo because when you do the the what that would be the, the hammer sound with your finger, one or two or three fingers, it sounds like I'm tapping on a nail. So I have this. Right? So that sound is, is the martillo sound. Then you have the open sound. 
Good. Then you have what they call the, uh, the uh, fingers, uh, the heel fingers motion, which is this, or the thumb. Some people play with their thumb and their fingers. They do this or they do this. Depends on the size of your hand, too. Okay? So, uh, and then you have the little drum. Hi. So now, what's the pattern? It's all alter alternating, and usually the bongo plays on beats one and three, the accent. So we have, uh, and to start, you want to start with with and one, and one and two and three and four, and you accent one and up to three, and one and two and three and four and one. Once you get that comfortable, and once again, speed is not important at the beginning. Accuracy of your sound is what's important, okay? Because if you play one time like that, another time like that, another time, you know, uh, whatever, it's just, you know, there's no consistency to your rhythm. So once you have it comfortably, then you start speeding it up. And then you have one and two. get faster so many 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 songs sometimes to play it's like okay so here we go so this is like a, a traditional straight ahead salsa song <laughs> I could end up being here for the whole hour on bongo, so I want to move on to something else. 
uh, and Gilbert, at, at any point, if you want to, you know, uh, cut in or interrupt me or add, tell me, Richie, can you move on to something else? Please tell me because I sometimes lock into something and uh, I don't want to spend too much time with that, okay? Oh, I don't know. Why am I not hearing you now? It's me. It's me. It's me. Uh, okay. We're all, we're all good, sir. We're all good. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Uh, it's it's. Is the balance uh, okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Th 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 this, this is the thing, sir. That I'll, I'll, uh, sometimes when 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 and, and and this is an FYI for our viewers that are watching right now. Sometimes uh, yes, the streams are supposed to be an hour, but when when an artist is going, guys, I won't stop him. The thing is, that he or she at that point is dropping gold nuggets of information, and usually when they're in the zone, that's when it gets more educational for us. And uh, yeah, I understand sometimes some of us have things to do, so we gotta leave the 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 the, the stream. But then you can also come and catch the replay. And trust me, we are all better off when we just let the artist go because we can come back and we can learn a lot. That's been my experience doing uh, uh, this days of percussion with Robert. Uh, 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 during our live wow. events, people yeah, would come yeah. and tell us, bro, it's an hour already, bro. <laughs> and then Robert would turn around and go, dude, he's in the zone. Just let him be. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So, well, anyway, I just wanted to to, uh, to just mention that because sometimes... Yes, yes. Doing everything. All right. So, anyway, so I was just showing, like, something a little more jazzy, something, you know, uh, a little bit on, on, uh, on the... Um, on the Latino side, you know, and still, let's say I'm still playing bongos and uh, uh, let me find something here that would be like, a, you know, for example, everybody knows like the song Get Lucky, right? It's just, it's just a pop song, right? So, so if they wanted me to play bongos, so if they say, well, we, you know, we want bongos on this song, you know, sometimes too, as a percussionist, I may say like, well, you know, I would really play a shaker and a tambourine and a conga or something, but the guy says, no, I want bongos. Okay, well, okay. So what do you, what do, you do? You then say, okay, well, let me, I have the technique. Let me just come up with something that might work with this. So I'll play something to this. Okay. And none of this is planned. It's just whatever I feel, you know, at the moment. So. that have supported my career through all of the years, you know, without them, 
and without the fine instruments that they make, it would be a, a tough thing for many of us. So anyway, so here we have, uh, I have three, of course, three congas of the, of the series, and and here we have like, you know, like that. And, well, where do you start with this? Okay, well, basically, and, and when I wrote my first book and did my first instru instrument uh, instructional video, which was a DVD at the time, <clears throat> I was teaching people to deal with four sounds. Now, four sounds is just to start. Once you know how to play, you discover all kinds of different things. You know, play, people play with their heels, they use in their fingers, and all of that kind of stuff. And I learned a little bit of tabla techniques. So then, what I did was I applied it to the way I play, and I used different elements that I've learned through the years uh, towards what I do in order to get out and hopefully be a little bit different than than uh, any other player. <clears throat> because uh, you know, as we know, there's hundreds of percussionists and conga players. You know, and uh, each one of us, you know, uh, has our own style of, and, and ways of playing things like that. So, anyway, so that's what I wanted to to, to mention here. So, where do we start? Four sounds, open open tone, and you play here or here, right? So you have. Now, let's just do the regular tumbao. Now, there's two tumbaos. 
there's what they call the old one, which is the way they used to play in Cuba when they played Juan Conga. <laughs>
We can hear it clearly. We can see it clearly, sir. Yes. Okay, so you can see it. Okay, so here's the bracket, and I have just a, a cha cha bell on it. Okay. Adjust this thing. So here. So then, so I designed this thing so that I could play. Yes, we can still see it. We can still see it. You can still see it? Okay. So then what what happens then? So then they would say like uh, well can you play uh can you play the pedal and and but can you play a tambourine too? I go, but well, wait a minute, I mean, I put, uh, you know, so then I have to learn. <laughs>
Well, you gotta be able to use your foot. You gotta be able to get at least a different, a decent sound with the one hand. You also have to develop shaker technique because it's not this. Like I see some people play, it's this. Or if it's a tambourine, you know, it's, right? But if you if sometimes I play it on my chest or on my leg. You know, and then uh uh you know you start I, I, I would you know start adding that and start adding a timbale and then a cowbell or whatever whatever again, whatever the music was telling me, you know, to do. Sometimes I would play uh in a in a Latin thing, they wanted to, uh, I'm just playing, you know, two things and all I have is maybe one conga and, and the cowbell and the foot, so then I just add the with a stick. I play the bell and it's still also with my foot.
we were just uh, trying to make some time so that Richie can uh, set up. It looks like he is ready to go. Here we go. Yeah. So, so now the cajon. So what are we dealing with with the cajon? First of all, this is called a flamenco, a flamenco cajon because it's got, it's got strings inside. The, the original and traditional cajon is the Peruvian cajon, and it has no strings inside. It's a dry, a dry sound. But the one with the strings inside has become the most popular one. And it's because it sounds almost like a drum set, especially when there's a mic. But what are we dealing here with in the cajon? We're dealing with the bass tone, and you're dealing with the what I call taps. And by the way, uh, just before I forget, I wrote a book on, on how to play. Uh, it's called uh, Play Cajon Now, The Basses and Beyond. But besides just learning basic stuff on the cajon, what I did was I developed it where you play cajon with one hand, shaker or tambourine with the other. So it really helps your independence and you can find it on, on Amazon. And uh, uh, so uh, again, like I said earlier, you learn the basic sounds of, of the instrument, but then you adapt and you add other stuff, you know, the slaps and bass tones and your fingers and your knuckles and whatever, you know. You know, I'll play through like a little bit of something here, like a different sound. So I
So again, a variation of things that you can do. So, but let's just say you're doing just the, the cajon thing, like I said, and and this is my uh, my like the, my the, my bass tone and and tracking sound that I use. So this is so that I can do this. You know, singer songwriters love just light stuff. Now, what's tricky here? When I'm playing Cajon, the motion is this way. When I'm playing a shaker, the motion is this way. So it becomes a little bit of this kind of a situation for people. And it becomes sometimes it would make me laugh because I would have the student and if he goes and trying to trying to get this going, you know, it would become a, a, a little bit. It looks simple, but it's not. You know, over here. Yes, right there. That's a re really good view, sir. Very good view. Yeah, you can see it okay? Yes. Yes, okay. So now I have a pedal, right? So now I'm even freer to do even hipper stuff.
This is called a tan tan. Okay? And this instrument is used in uh, in Brazilian music to play in a soft female because the foundation of Brazilian music is the surdo, you know, the big drum that they play, you know, but here, so maybe if I turn sideways, you can hear it a little better. Too many things over here. <laughs> okay, so we have this, right? And so one hand plays over here and the other one plays over here. So if I got Samba world, and that's a style that you also have to, uh, you know, understand how it functions, how it works, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, anyway, so this is, you know, pretty much a little bit of a kind of like well, what I do. I, like I said, I can I combine different things. Uh, you know, behind me that you can see there's a, a bit of a drum set, you know, back there, and. Uh, uh, but this drum set, because I, I am in an apartment, it has heads that you can't hear. They're called silent strokes. So I'm not really going to be able to play anything on it. But what I do there is that, which in the style that I play, I'll play it, but I'll have one timbale, I'll have one conga, I'll have the pedal on my left foot next to the hi-hat, and I'll play all of it together. And hopefully I can send one of these links that I have uh, to Gilbert so that he can play it and you can hear a little bit of that. I have a, a duo that we play. I play that kind of a hybrid setup and, and my uh, my partner plays keyboard, bass, keyboards, and sings. And uh, and between both of us, we sound like five guys, you know? So, so it's pretty cool, pretty cool to, to, uh, to do these kind of things. So my suggestion as a, as a teacher is First, take one instrument at a time. Once you're comfortable with it, figure out, and of course, depends on the kind of music that you play, but if you want to develop your independence, then the thing is you start adding other instruments to it and learn these instruments separately first. I mean, one, one more that I just want to show real quick, or, or I should say two of them, it's, you know, like the, the Brazilian ballet, this is a very difficult instrument to play. It takes a long time, but... Uh, so this, this, this part is very tiring or whatever, and it takes time. But you know, the more you play that style of music, the the, the better it, it, it will get. The same with maracas, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, you learn all these things, and what they call it, cepillao, and, and uh, I'm trying to get, learn that. In the uh, Venezuelan music, if you really want to hear the most incredible maraca players in the world, they're from Venezuela, the Janeiro players. They, they, the, the, the things that they do, is, and they play this style, it's very, very, very intense. And, and uh, you know, because the, the Afro-Cubans play more this way, you know, than this way, than the Venezuelans do. But it's a fantastic and I love hearing these guys play. Anyway, Gilbert, I think that's uh, going to be it for me today. Uh, I hope I hope it, I hope I did enough stuff. I don't know. You know? Sir, you 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 blew us away for sure. It's it's incredible uh, to see to see you in action, and not you know we we got to see you play right, but um, how to. Uh, 
teach this stuff. You make it seem so easy, so simple. And that is the mark of a true, of a true, um, a, a, a consummate teacher, a consummate teacher. It's it's amazing, and, and uh, I, you, I know you took me to school quite a bit right now, and I'm sure our our our, our viewers feel the same. Brad Anderson co commented because uh, you said that you have a band and and uh, a, a duet, right? And you guys sound like five, and he said you sound like five guys yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, Yeah. Well, I, you know what? I, I just hope that everybody just, like you said, just gets a little bit of something that maybe will help them improve or maybe open their eyes to like, oh, wow, I, I mean, you know, why not? Let me try that. Let me try this. Let me try that. And, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, music is, is, is never ending. I mean, I mean, I, 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 what I've learned is that the more time goes by, the less I know, you know? Yes. Uh, because there's so much out there. There's so many different styles. You know, when I played with a Persian artist, I had to learn how to play six, eight, the way they do, you know, not the way the Afro-Cubans do it, you know, because for example, they, they accent, even though it's in six, eight, they accent the beat five. They go, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five six. So it's not da gach 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 that's the Cuban, but the two go gach gach that's why they go when you see them dance. But I did it, it's a different approach, you know what I mean? Oh wow. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, I learned that from playing with some Persian guys, you know that are amazing players because with the finger technique those guys have is incredible. It's like the Indian guys that play tabla from India. I mean, those are guys, yes. good, you know, and all the, and you got to, if you really want to play tabla, you got to learn that language, you know, the takamini, takaminis and all that kind of thing. And, yes. Uh, so, if I may do a little plug in, uh, Richie right here on, on the guys, be on the lookout on the 21st, on the 21st, uh, We're going to have an amazing, amazing tabla player slash educator from India. He performed for us in the Valley Percussion Festival uh, 2021 um, event, Pranshu Shaturlal. He's going to be wow. doing a full-blown clinic on August the 21st. And I, I, I find it pretty amazing what, what Richie said throughout his clinic. He actually went and learned this uh, tabla techniques to apply them, and 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 that's why he's unique. He took from here, from over there, from over here, and not only that, but then he got he got uh, uh you know creative with it, and he started to incorporate you know even common things, but combine them like for example the way you were playing the widow or that 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 attachment that you put on 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 the on the on the cajon. Uh, that that sounds like a widow or, or acts like a widow itself too so you know guys you know be here august 21st um be uh, uh if i were you guys i would like and follow the instagram and the uh, facebook pages and i would subscribe to the youtube channel g drums youtube channel so you can keep up with this so you can keep up with what we're going to be uh, uh showing And you can always come back and catch them, yes? Uh, but yes, August 21st, Pranshu Shaturlal. He will be here giving us a full-blown from somebody that eats, breathes, leaves, uh, lives, right, uh, uh, the culture of tabla playing. So, yeah. yes, thank you. Yeah, that's a whole nother world. And, I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't think of myself as a tabla player. I just took some of the techniques so that I could develop a little bit of the finger stuff, you know? I mean, that's why, like, on a cajon, I can go, I go, you know, because I'm doing, yes. it, with the, I'm doing it with the fingers, you know? Uh, yeah. You know, those kind of things. You know, you know those kind of things. Yes. Yeah, I'm, not a, I'm not a double player because, you know, That's funny. When I was studying it for a while, I got called to do a session and, and they said, you have tablas? They go, yeah. And I said, oh, good. I'll get to play a little bit of them. So then they brought a, a guy from India to play them. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> you you know what would be? 
<laughs> you know what would be great, Richie? What would be amazing if we can get you guys to collaborate on 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 the way you did that collaboration with your son uh -huh. uh, uh, for LP. If you could do a collaboration with Pranchu, I'm sure if I mention it to him, oh, he would be realize, like, "Let's do it." Yeah, they're so advanced in a different world, but but uh, but anyway, I'd give it a shot. I'm not afraid to try anything, so you know we'll go from there. But, well, the uh, thing I'll, is, you you would do your thing, and he would do his thing, and we would combine them. You would have yeah. these different techniques and styles going on in one on on one do it. Yeah. I wish you could, uh, if you get a chance somehow, if you download anything or anybody that's watching, if they go to the drum channel and they put my name and my son, Roland Gajate Garcia, Richie Gajate Garcia, we did this whole hybrid thing, both of us playing a bunch of stuff at the same time. Really cool. I think it's really worthwhile checking it out, you know? So, I, 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 I found it. Oh, you did? With Don Lombardi, you know, that one where he's asking us questions and stuff? Well, I found only when you guys are playing, but oh, I found the LP one. That's the one I found. Yeah, no, the LP, that's, that was done, but I'm talking about the drum channel at DW that we did it at LP. That no, one I, 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 I. Yes. So that one is really, really, really very cool because we did, we had these two completes. We were facing each other, these two setups. Then when we finished that, we did another piece and then we switched. And then he played oh. my setup and I played his. You know? Wow. So. Uh, Excuse me. So that was very, very, very cool. But listen, yes, I want to thank you a million for thinking of me to come and do do this. You know, I mean, I'm glad you're staying true. I would call loyal to the Garcia name. Yes. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you know, but but I hope whoever was watching, there's even if it was just one little thing that they picked up from what I may have mentioned or taught or whatever, then I'm very, I feel that it was a big success in that respect, you know? Yes, I'm sure it is because you placed everything so easy, so simple to learn, sir. Uh, um, you, you could get a, 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 a toddler. Well, not a toddler, but, you know, somebody that already can understand what you're saying and they could do it. That, that's how simple it, it yeah, you, thought, you made I it. Kids, I taught my kids since they were little. So I, uh, yes, yeah, I told I them. My, my books always start beginner to intermediate. Because players are not going to go looking for my book. You know, they they already know how to play. It's just a yes. matter of to develop more ability. The only last thing that I like to mention that I forgot to mention is that if you want to develop more of your chops, uh, let's say on conga, so it, you use the same rudiments that you use on drumming. You know what I mean? We have, for example, uh, um, You know, like doing like doing drags or something like that, or paradiddles. You know, like if you're playing a paradiddle, you know, or if you're doing uh, rolls, right? On congas, you don't really your hands don't really bounce like a stick does, but it's in motion, so it's this. And it's funny that you bringing it up, sir, because Henry Bruin just shared that with me a couple of days ago. He goes, have your kids, uh, the drumline kids he was referring, have your kids practice rudiments with their hands. Just put their hands yeah. on the table and practice it. And it's exactly what you're saying. Yes, because, uh, for, you know, I'm trying to move forward a little bit. Uh, uh, for example, I was just saying like the five-stroke girl, right? I want to divide it. You know, that if I have the, the, the other drum, then uh, I'll. Uh, 
you know, then I can practice this. Yes, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. That's a be mind blown. Mind blown. Yes. Yeah, I, I was practicing. Well, there's one exercise that is this: is one hand, two hands, three hands. So it's like one. Yes, yes. It, it reminds me of a paradiddle builder uh, that, that I, I believe this was a Joe Hobbs, I think, shared it with me. Uh, yeah, yeah, where exactly. it, it, I have a book that I, I don't have. It's in the, in the room, but there's a book that has all of that stuff, you know, and I just do it over here. And the one maybe final thing I want to say about practicing anything, and, uh, and I recommend this to everybody. There's, a, there's an app called Metro Timer, okay? The app is a metronome, but it's by minutes. And one thing I learned when I took some lessons with Changuito was that he said, any song that you play, the minimum is going to last is three minutes, okay? So if you're going to play an exercise, you got to play at least three to seven minutes, the same thing over and over and over until it becomes part of your muscle uh, uh, ability to do without thinking about it, you know? So the Metro Timer, which is an app and it's free on your phone, okay, when you when you use it, it, it does it by minutes. So you say like, okay, I want to do an exercise. Let me, and it's, uh, this is what it looks like if you can see. Uh, it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like that. But it's got in the bottom minutes, you know? So, and it, and it plays the minutes, right? And then when a minute is over, a bell rings, like, you know, like you just won, won the fight or something. But it's really great because it helps you, it really helps you lock into a, a, a rhythm or a pattern, you know what I mean, for a, a certain amount of time. And when you practice those things, you also practice them at different levels, you know, softly, medium, loud, you know. You have to practice them at different levels because, as you know, sometimes you play with a band and and uh, the first guy that they take the microphone away from is usually the conga player. The one that's got to beat his hands up, you know? So, you know, so, uh, so you want to be able to have the power to also get those things out at different dynamic levels. Okay? Yes. This is why I say that the music thing is non-ending. There's so much to learn, you know what I mean? And, con and to be aware of as a player, you know, also if you play with a band that plays soft, you don't want to be playing loud. Because yes. You're, you're getting in the way and all of this kind of, okay? You, 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 you know, I was, I was thinking right now, sir, just, just being able, uh, uh, just being able to play multiple instruments at the same time, drum set style, uh, that is so is a task, a task within itself. But uh, what we need to realize is that when you are playing multiple instruments, your shaker has a certain dynamic. Uh -huh. Your shaker has a certain dynamic level. Your conga has a certain dynamic level that cowbell can really pierce. So not only do you have to, you know, uh, uh, manage to be able to place them rhythmically in time, but you need to be blending. You need to be backing off from the foot, but not backing off from the hand, but not backing off from the, you know, it's, it's, it's that. So there's a lot involved. It's, uh, there's the, the dynamics and the balance of each instrument, you know? Yes. Some instruments are louder than others just naturally, you know? So that kind of a thing. But anyway, yes. like I said, we can talk about this all day. But I want to thank you, Emilian, for having me on, on the, on the uh, you know, on the Valley Percussion Festival. And hopefully someday we can do this again, maybe live someday. Or yes. Or do something like that. But we like have said, to. Uh, just for the, for the, 
recognition of whoever's watching. I have uh, four books that I've written. I have three CDs that I've done. I've designed uh, symbols for Sabian. But I have the Gahate bracket that you saw me play the cowbell with. I have my own Timbale signature sticks with Vader. And these are all things that I've accomplished through the years and because I found that these things were important to me. Not because that I could you know, have my name on this, I have my name on that. These were things that I wanted that I thought would work best for me, for my way of playing. And thank yes. the Lord it yeah. happened. So I'm grateful. For yeah, that. that bracket has really taken off. And it's like everybody everybody that's a drummer, I would say 90% of them have it. And they've been practicing yeah. clave with it. Yes. You know what's funny is that uh, uh, my uh, any company that even makes the, same, the bracket, even though it's uh, a different company, everybody calls it the gahate. <laughs> Yes, they do. That's how they talk about it. I became like Kleenex. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who makes tissue. They always say, "Give me a Kleenex." You know? Yes, exactly, exactly. You are right. You are right. And and with good reason, sir. With good reason, absolutely. Uh, well, sir, this this is you've been to our event. This would make it twice, I believe. Once in person, once and in and person. this, yeah, yeah. and and and. and uh, we, we we love you here. The Valley, South Texas loves you. And I'm sure that uh, the, the sentiment is the same all over the world. Uh, the streams are watched. Uh, I have people from different parts of the world that will message us and they keep up with us. So that's, you know, I'm sure their sentiment all over the world is the same for you. This is your house. This channel is at your service. Anytime that you want something, need something, my answer is yes. Just tell us what we need to do and when, um, and we'll gladly do it. You had mentioned something about possibly having your son. We would love to have, you know, you him. We would love to have you and him do a duet. I mean, whatever it is, sir, that we're at your service. Uh, we love you here, and you're you're, you're a home uh, you're a home artist for us here. All right. Well, thank you very much, and and my regards and greetings to everyone that's been watching or listening or whatever. And I want to thank you again uh, uh, for contacting me. If you see Botello, give him a big hug for me. And Robert, uh, yeah, Robert, Robert said, he said, please say hi to him. So right here, Robert, you saw it. I told him and he just. <laughs> All right. All right, my brother. Well, anyway, take care. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. And uh, we'll see you soon one of these days somewhere. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Richie, right. uh, uh, thank you so, so much. You are deeply honored. Guys, next week on Saturday, that will be the 14th, August 14th, Bruce Becker. You want to get your chops going with your drum set? You know, practice what Richie said, but also come and catch. August 14th, we have Bruce Becker. On the 21st, we have Pranchu Chaturlal. Guys, we Thanks. have all the reasons to be here and all the reasons not to miss it. Okay, just so you know, I'm a, a Bruce is a dear friend of mine, and uh, we studied. And when I in the drumming, we studied with one of the great teachers, he and I, and some other people together, which was Freddie oh, wow. Gruber. And and yes, Bruce is the one that's got his his whole thing down. And yes. uh, and I've also recorded with Bruce and him and his brother. I did a couple of albums uh, that I recorded on. So we go way back. So oh, tell him wow. I'm the best, uh, and uh, I wish him the best and a big hug from Richie over here. Okay. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Sir, if we want to get in touch with you for lessons, how can we do that? Uh, just all they have to do is either, uh, 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 you can give my email, I don't, you know, just email me at gahate at AOL.com and uh, just email me and then I can set it up and I do some lessons with people on, you know, uh, either Zoom or on WhatsApp or whatever. I have students from Chile and different places and I work with them on helping them just develop their whole musicality and their technique, you know? Gahate at AOL.com, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Email, guys, is in the comments. Email is in the or, comments or so you can, can reach him. You can find me on, on Facebook under Ricardo Garcia because, unfortunately, my Richie Gahate Garcia account got hacked. So I can't I can't even access it anymore. It's there, but I can't access it. So um, I, I I figure well, let me just put Ricardo Garcia, then hopefully that won't get hacked. But the, the, yes, so. okay. There we go, guys. It's all in the comments, sir. It's okay. been an honor, guys. See you next week.
Until next time. Uh